We're keen to find out the views today of former Italian Prime Minister Romano Prodi, who joins me now from Bologna. First of all, Mr Prodi, thank you very much for talking to Bloomberg today. Do you thank think you. that Greece and indeed the whole of the Eurozone's reputation has been damaged by having to go to the IMF? Well, uh, reputation certainly has been damaged in the beginning, but after all the deep, deep quarrels, all, all, after all the deep tension that always happened uh, in the European arena, the decision has been taken. And, uh, you know, now it's clear that there is no choice. Uh, uh, everybody is backing the euro. Everybody is uh, as clearly seen that there is no alternative. This was important. Uh, uh, it, it was much better to find the solution a couple of months uh, before. Mm. But because of uh, German elections, because of the normal problem of uh, Europe that has no fixed rules about that, uh, that uh, needs always to do, take decision case by case, it was uh, a long decision, but now, now, I think that uh, the clear conclusion is that there is no alternative. Now, you mentioned that there are no fixed rules. Do you regret that when uh, you were the uh, European Finance Minister, when the euro was introduced, uh, you didn't try and enforce a common fiscal policy across the eurozone? Oh, of course, of course I regret that because uh, I think that, uh, well, uh, if you have a common currency, you need a common fiscal policy. Not, of course, in the details, but in the broad macroeconomic lines. And you need an authority to control the behavior of the government. And now, you know, step by step, we are, we, we are getting uh, this result, you know, because when you have... Uh, uh, the uh, 16 member countries of the euro, when you have the Commission working together with the backing of the European Central Bank, you, uh, uh, in an empirical way, you get the results of working together because you know that this is your common currency. And, uh, you know, I, uh, this is, this, I think, the result because the preoccupation of the rate, you know, of, of the level of, uh, of, of, of rate of exchange of the euro vis-à-vis uh, -vis the dollar, this is not, uh, you know, the first point because I live among people who are only happy because of the decline of the euro, you know, mm. because uh, <laughs> of export. They were complaining, complaining, complaining. And so why to... Uh, complain now. You have to be coherent. Now, do you think, therefore, that, uh, that the, the European Union has gone far enough, or do we need a stronger common fiscal policy if the Euro experiment is going to succeed long term? No, 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 not far enough. Uh, they have done a step. They have uh, uh, clearly. Uh, 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 given the message that the di direction is taken, now you have a lot of problems on all the technical application on how to pass from this decision to general rules and even more how to control the uh, governments, uh, the behaviors of the governments. Uh, because this is a delicate point, because as you know, uh, the austerity policy in Greece have uh, had deep, 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 deep consequences. Mm. But, uh, uh, you know, it's, uh, the message is clear, even if it uh, was reluctant uh, because of political problems, even Germany has agreed that uh, now we must be coherent and consistent with the decision taking of having a common, a common uh, currency. The delay has cost has, has had a very very high cost, you know. But uh, uh, to build Europe, you need time, as you know. You know, uh, we need 50 years to arrive to the point in which we are now. We shall need a lot of time 
to uh, conclude this coherent policy. But there is no, no alternative. So do you think then that it's right that countries like Portugal, Spain and Italy should be cutting their deficits now when in fact some economists argue that if they spend more that would help economic growth? Well, first of all, uh, economic growth will be helped now also by the going down of the euro. Uh, mm -hmm. If you think that in one year uh, we lost 8% and so in terms of growth in normal time you could uh, help 0.4% uh, of growth about that. But uh, I think that uh, uh, when I was in the government I had the priority of fiscal discipline. Because if you have the advantage of being in a big monetary area like the euro, you must behave coherently with that. It's, it's so clear, you know. If only and, everyone and, and, else had and, done what you did, Mr. Prodi, though, because of course um, you did slash uh, the, the Italian budget deficit, which allowed you to meet the criteria to join the euro. The problem is that lots of other people kept missing that target and nothing happened to them. That has to change, does it? Of course, because you had no authority <laughs> to, 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 to control it. Uh, uh, this is why I am insisting that now, because, uh, let's say, collective money has been put in this direction, uh, it is clear that now you must have a supernational control on the uh, uh, countries. Otherwise, of course, the euro cannot work. Mr. Prodi, uh, choice... I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Just before we go, we don't have much time, I wanted to ask you what you think of uh, how Jean-Claude Trichet has been faring and has he veered away too far from his mandate? Uh, what I did that the how has, how has Jean-Claude Trichet been faring in this crisis? Yes. Uh, uh, Trichet? Yes. I think that... Ah, the, the, the European Central Bank, you mean. I think that they did well their job, you know, because uh, uh, they can do what they have done. Thank you, Mr. Brody. Thank you very much indeed.